I hit chronic fatigue and was pretty wiped for about six months. Taylor, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. Thank you, brother. Oh. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'm really excited to have you here. Just like personally, because I'm really curious, because I've been like a, a, a Paul Check fan for ages. So I just want to know like a little bit about your experience of like HLC, because I'm like, at some point along down the line, I can't wait to yeah. like go and do this stuff. So I wonder what, like, what drew you to like invest into that. And then like, what are some of the like, key things that yeah. you learned from it? And did you enjoy it? Mate, it, it's been uh, so pivotal for me in my whole life, basically. So I was first introduced to Paul's work through a lady called Jen Carton. And she was my coach when I was about 16 years of age. And she was helping me to, to come up into the professional triathlon ranks. So at that time, racing juniors and um, coming up to, to racing at a world stage level. And um, she was helping me with the, the exercise part. You know, I sought after her to help me with uh, some training outside of my swimming, riding and running and to help me with my body, get the most out of it. So as a 16-year-old, I was like, you know, just give me the hardest stuff, give me the <laughs> hardest, you know, gnarliest exercises, um, you know. And she was incredible at that and really helped me to level up my biomechanics, understand my posture, how my spine rotates, where it could be limiting in the, in the water. Um, she broke down my running mechanics and, you know... Uh, at the time, I was wearing orthotics as a 16-year-old and she's like, get those things out, you're going to strengthen your feet. Um, and really, really helped me go to a next level physical, physically. Um, but on the holistic lifestyle coaching part, there were, there were moments where I was getting sick. Um, you know, it was quite often that I was maybe breaking down with my energy or, or getting sick and, and impacting my training or my racing. And so she started to give me certain tools from a nutritional perspective, um, but also a mental, emotional perspective. Um, she was bringing the tools that she had learned for herself, but also through Paul's, Paul's work. And... She began by giving me these things called zone exercises. Now, zone exercises are where you really wind down the nervous system. Um, they're movements where you uh, connect your breathing in with a slow movement. It can be kind of like Tai Chi or sometimes we do them on the floor. Um, there can be Feldenkrais movements, so all very slow, very particular and very breath orientated. And I remember when she was first wanting to give me these zone exercises, she had me on the floor moving really slow. And I was like, Jen, what is this shit? <laughs> How old were you this time? Like 16. 16, 16 yeah. I was like, why am I doing this? I need to be like working out hard. Well, I should be sweating. Like I should be going hard. She's like, Taylor, you just got to relax your nervous system. Remember that if you let go and you drop into that parasympathetic state it's going to support your training and i was like oh i just don't care about that i need to go hard <laughs> and so i was doing these exercises and i was like oh this i just i just don't get it i don't get it jen and anyway some time passed and i actually stepped pretty deep into overtraining and i hit chronic fatigue and was pretty wiped for about six months and so coming back to, to see her, um, she's like, hey, you gotta, you got to understand your nervous system better. I've been trying to teach you these zone exercises and I know you haven't been doing them because you're so, your nervous system's so jacked and you're wiped because of it. And so I really dived into the HLC principles with her during that time. So it was like dialing my belief systems, my paradigms, you know, what got me there, what put me in the hole, what was restricting me from a mental level from going into that parasympathetic state or going into slow breathing type work, 
what was my breathing patterns like and how did I how could I learn to understand how that's so influential upon my body and upon my uh, training um, nutritionally so many things had to change to support my adrenals to support my body um, you know I remember really like jumping into it though going from being a kid who would just have pasta and cheese <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know eating whatever I wanted having these pretty pretty poor protein shakes and things like that into putting every color of vegetable into an omelet every single morning and following that with some celtic sea salt in the water like you've provided me today <laughs> brother. um and and really you know s- tapping into what's happening within my bloods and therefore what are some supplementation that's very specific to to what's needed there and getting so into that to support me to to come out of this hole that i was in um and so i had to understand my physiology but how my brain was connected to that physiology and so that took me into a a deep dive and started to really self-study um and then dive into the hlc work myself so whilst i was racing in back in 2012 i did uh hlc one um with the czech institute Uh, met joanna rushton who is now still a mentor of mine today. And, yeah, that just really catapulted me into understanding this whole other realm of performance, but lifestyle and uh, things like that to help my, my training. But it's really just to help me as a person. Like, you've been doing this stuff for a long time. Mm. Like, 16, 17, starting to learn, like, those principles, checking everything like bloods, all the rest of it, and then getting yeah. your head right, belief systems right at like 16, mm. like 17. Like that's a lot of growth Yeah, at a young age, especially to be like locked in. Yeah. Question, is your body perfect? Are you like just... No, <laughs> no, no, like, no. Is it like are you just completely injury <laughs> free and just beast or... No, well, I'm, I'm injury free. Um, but yeah, no, my body is... Yeah, it's it's my temple, you know. I'm I'm into that saying. It's so important to me, and um, yeah, from a postural perspective, how that impacts even my mindset, things like that. But yeah, been into this work for quite some time. So blessed to have have been open enough at 16 because I remember I was handed the book, The Seven Spiritual Laws to Success, at 16. No way. And, and you read it? And I read it. Oh, that's and it cool. just absolutely blew my mind. You know, understanding, you know, components of quantum physics, um, aspects of energy and, you know, understanding ourselves as a, an electromagnetic organism yeah. um, was, was a huge, uh, like, paradigm shift for me. So what time? So what did like success look like to you then, and what does it look like to you now? Because I know that like yeah. the relationship with that evolves and changes. Yeah. So just in, to simplify that, I feel like I've gone from the competitive plane into the creative plane. Because you were competing eight years professionally. Yep. Triathlete. Yep. Crushing it. So it was very much about um, being at the top of of the game. And Did you get that? Oh, I, I raced at a world stage level. <laughs> yep. Sick, that's so and cool. Had a few podiums at, at that level, which was which was epic and epic experiences. And you know, and I and I'll, I'll share how the this visualization, meditation, spiritual aspects would come into play in that too. But um, yeah, very successful for me then was around competition around winning and you know that's that was great for me then because it really helped me to take myself to the next level you know whilst it's very much about separation you know being at the top and being at the top of the hierarchy of performance um very ego driven as Mm. well i was going to ask that because sometimes it's very you notice it is against yourself but other times it is like it's it is can get really ego driven, but 
for your goals yeah. sometimes like it's a good thing cause totally it like, helps you like, get, exactly. get to your goals yeah yeah it, and we can't mix up here that the the ego and the soul are two sides to the same coin that they they need each other and you know being driven in that way I've learnt so many incredible things um it doesn't drive me now but it was imperative in in my ability to understand myself and have experiences and things like that so whereas success now is um it's about it's about family it's you know but first and foremost it's about my love for myself you know that that's really the the driver of success for me because if i have that and and when i when i deeply experience that things like self-esteem or leadership or you know connecting with people being successful in with my clients or or you know being creative in my business everything else stems from that foundation oh, yeah I, w- I really want to get into that um, one thing that i see which is really common and a lot of people don't even understand that they have mm-hmm. is some sort of self-worth thing that that yeah. comes up like i find that's a lot of people i believe personally from what i'm studying at the moment like there's roots to shame is a very common thing that I can see. And going to a place that like, like you've been you know, co-founding of and opening up like your native state, which is this bathhouse in Coolangatta, which is like 40 minutes or well, half an hour. North, like it's, it's near the Gold Coast airport, right? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Like, where is it? It's near the Gold Coast airport. Yeah. And it's so beautiful and pristine and walking in there's like such a, like a nice vibe. And it feels like you're in this like Roman prince's temple is what it's like when you're in there. Like it's so beautiful. And I find like a, as a problem that I see come across because I coach a lot of like, entrepreneurs and a lot of people who are wanting to you know, find success, but the, the mindset hasn't been 100% connected yet. It's not like yeah. the tools there. And what I know is that, and what I've seen happen is that some people don't feel like they are worthy enough to open up, you know, create a, a space like that. They're not worthy enough to chase their dreams or try to open something. And I do believe it comes down to the thing, as you mentioned, is like, Okay, when you love yourself enough, like so much that you're like, you know, I deserve to have a place like that and I deserve to you know, provide for people like this way and host so that they can receive some of this beauty that I've got in my mind that I can create. Mm. I just want to know like your perspective on that and like how you use that as a driver because I'm thinking about my listeners and they're like, okay, how can I love myself more so that I can bring more of that out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so as I shared, to have that as a foundation is where our self-esteem can rise. Um, but you know, bringing it back to the, the shame piece where we're all conditioned and, and so much of our beliefs and our stories are embedded in our mind via our upbringing, our childhood, basically. And, yeah, with... With our, our childhood, we're developing our subconscious mind and we're, we're developing that via our environment, how we adapt, react or respond to things. You know, if you've been given your results to a maths quiz and you see there in front of you that you've got 30 out of 100 right and you look over there and your friend's got 85 here on the right and your, your other friend over there on the left's got 95, then your mind you create this internal dialogue that shit i'm no good at maths and the more that that's repeated in in the mind the more it embeds itself in the subconscious now as a belief or a story and so that belief that i'm just no good at maths starts to really impact the actions we take so if I believe that I'm no good at it, then it's probably likely that I might try and avoid maths class to avoid the shame of being not so good. I might try, uh, I won't like opening my maths textbook to study it because I'll just have this program running <laughs> that I'm shit at this. And so whatever we action, therefore, creates our results. And so in this instance, there's going to be a lack of results maths now whatever our results are come back and feed our identity and so now we identify as someone that's just 
no good at it. And that reconditions the conscious mind, again, comes back into the subconscious, impacts the action and the result and becomes this loop. So we have to understand our loops. We have to understand what's happening at a, at a deeper subconscious level. And the best way to understand that is to just look at your results. How are your results going? Because it's going to tell you about your subconscious. And if they're not very good, then you need to take a deep dive into a self-awareness and be courageous enough to go, hey, what am I actually holding here? Because the problem for our society is that there's not enough courage to do that. People are too avoidant, scared to look at their own, to look at themselves at, a, at, a, at that deeper level. Oh, I feel that one, that the mass thing rang so true. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I actually had this memory that I haven't thought of in ages when I was in year two or four. We had like these mass cards with different colours and there was like two problems that I once needed help to figure out. Mm-hmm. I remember like the teacher was like, no, like, like whatever, like, because uh, I couldn't just, I was like, couldn't understand. Yep. Hated maths, didn't do it my whole life. And then I studied aviation at uni for a little while. Yep. First thing was maths. I had yep. to like learn and get good at maths. And I was like this. Yep. Like it's real funny you mentioned that. And um, and, and just, uh, just on that um, is that you can try and change the actions. So you can study more, right? But if you still hold the same belief that I'm no good at it, it's the belief that will run the program. So people can try and change through their actions, but if, you've st- if you're still running the same paradigm, then that'll always overtake mm-hmm. the action. So h- how do you change the beliefs? Yeah, you've, you've got you've to bring in that deep self-awareness. Mm-hmm. You've got to start digging. Yeah. Uh, and you know, this is where meditation comes in. Meditation is a tool. Um, but it requires it requires a lot of work. Yeah. You've got to be journaling about yourself. You've got to start to understand about self actualization. You've got to uh, start to understand, you know, that ninety five percent of our conditioning is very much held in our childhood, in our inner child. It's about gathering the information to understand yourself more cultivating it whether it's through mentors or through podcasts or um but you've got to do the work you've got to study yourself just like you might want to study a degree the best degree that you can study is you (laughs) (laughs) and you've got to dive in you've got to journal you've got to you know step into moving through your blocks um and if you need support then ask for it yeah you know have the courage to ask for that um but we need to develop our own um inner warrior you know inner work warrior um to to help us in all planes yeah so true because i find that there's so much resistance like for that, for a lot of people. And I feel like, this is what I think, like to hear your opinion on it, that there has been so much conditioned shame mm. or, or beliefs or I can't do this, that when they have to take a mirror <coughs> and face it up and have a look mm. and do the inner work and be like, wow, I'm really not the person that I want to be. It's like their ego or something else is like, no. Yep. Any excuse to, no, I will work my hardest and build a business <coughs> or do something to try to provide for something that I do not want to do mm. at all. Mm. And then, you know, years, years, years laid down the track, be like, shit, lean into something else, whatever, to yep. distract themselves. So let's go abuse something else instead because yep. I didn't, I couldn't look at myself yep. and actually learn about myself because it was too painful. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, that comes back to, needing the courage needing to have a backbone <laughs> yeah, to even do is. that <laughs> you know so you know hats off to all the people out there doing that and, and i'm sure a lot of people listening right now you know uh, are on that journey to even just listen to a podcast like this so you know kudos 
keep going. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love that. I would like. I do want to talk about like some of the meditation, like visualization tools that you've used or learned, or even just some prompts that people can, like who are listening, can use or understand in terms of like how you practically mm. use them to have things come into fruition. Because they're yeah, like, like I won't say it enough for people who haven't seen your native state. Like even like the photos are great, but still doesn't do it justice when like you go there and see like how beautiful like the place actually is. Mm-hmm. And like just I feel like experiencing that sort of awe when you walk in somewhere like I like listening to Jordan Peterson. He's like, you know, mm-hmm. beauty is extremely important. Like having the those aesthetics. Yeah. And in my personality type, I'm not so aesthetically focused. So when I do go to a place like that, I'm like, oh, I feel like I get like all of this. Oh, it just comes in and it's it's so good. And it's a real a good sign of just like you had this vision, brought it to life. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd like to know some tools. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, um, meditation first began for me through Dr. Joe Dispenza. Nice. Um, and last year to the moon. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And his meditations, um, I I would practice when I was still racing. Um, and I would visualize, I would visualize myself in these specific races that I was um, about to race. One, one to share a story to share is myself three months out from racing the Noosa Triathlon, and the Noosa Triathlon is one of the biggest triathlons in the world. And about three months out, I created. A, a vision board for myself it was actually a vision movie so I created you know myself you know winning other races and you, you know myself in these really um, good positions uh, this vision board held certain writing and prompts and mantras but every single day I would go into meditation and, and visualize a certain aspect of the race whether it was the swim leg where we the gun would go would run into the water and I'd visualize myself first to the can um, I visualized even down to the day that it was a bit overcast a little bit rainy I would visualize myself coming out of the water in this front group and I would be swim training and also visualizing so not just in meditation but I was bringing these visuals into into the into real life so i'd be in the pool in a 50 meter pool swimming but i'd be pretending that i was at noosa beach um and so i'd visualize coming out would get on the bike and would be going up this this hill and i'd be visualize myself feeling good and um, i'd do that in the meditation but then i would be riding up tommywood mountain in corumban and i'll be visualized going visualizing going up that hill as well and sometimes the visualizations were so strong that you know i i was so blocked out to the world i was so blocked out to tommy one mountain because i was so in me just being in noosa so much so that when it would come to say the run leg i would visualize um coming off the bike being in this front group and and i got to this point where I would be a K out from the finish line and I'd visualise myself with, at that time, my, my triathlon hero, so Courtney Atkinson. And I'd just visualise that him and I would, would be, you know, toe-to-toe next to each other with a K to go. And some, at the time I was living in Broadbeach and, and I'd be visualising this and I'd be running through Hedges Ave and there were moments where I'd have tears coming down my face because I'm so in the visualization of you know about to perform so well and coming to the or or to continue the visualization I'd be like okay I want to cross the I want to get to this point in the race where it's him and I and you know I see this marker just at the bridge and that's where I'm I'm going to go and I'm going to push there and I'm going to I'm going to break um break him and and then as i come over the bridge i'm going to see my family over there and then i'm going to see my coach here and i'm going to high five him in the grandstand and i'm going to go across the line with my fingers like this 
to the side and then the cameras are going to flash and, and I'm going to be like, what? Oh, good. <laughs> and so I visualise that day in, day out, in my runs, in my rides, in the swim. And anyway, get to the actual race. I get to the race and it's overcast, a little bit rainy. <laughs> I you know, run into the water first and I get to the first can first. I'm swimming, feeling good. I get out of the water in this front group, all, all's going well. I'm riding up, up the mountain and um, feeling comfortable sitting in that front group. I come off the bike and, and I'm in this lead group and I'm like, okay, you know, things are going well here. And the run was a really good leg for me. Um, anyway, I get to about a K to go and I look to my side and there's, there's you know, my idol. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, shit, how good's this? And then I see this, the landmark, I see the bridge and then it all hits me and I'm like, shit, this is where I'm meant to go. Oh, hang on a sec, I've seen this moment. I've seen this moment in time. And so I go and, and then I'm coming over the bridge and then I'm like, I see my family over there cheering, going crazy. And then I, I high-five my coach. I go across the line like this and the cameras flash. And I go, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and it was, like, it was like a glitch in the matrix. It was like oh, I've just accessed the cheat code to life. And it was like one of the most profound moments for me. Because it was like, what? You know, I've got this this power to manifest. That really solidifies that what happens in your mind first happens in reality. Like you can really bring it. You think about it so strongly and powerfully. Like I try to break down manifestation into a science. You see a new yellow van somewhere, you start seeing it everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. (coughs) If you focus on it, it's like, whoa. Totally. And so, you know, so many things came out of that for me. First and foremost, I had to believe that I could do such a thing. Mm. And so it had to be in alignment with my belief system to, to do so had to have the self-esteem to visualise that every single day. Um, and through that, through that process, it was, for me, it was like, I've got to tell people about this and I've got to do this more. <laughs> <laughs> Where else can I do this? You get obsessed, right? You're like, oh, yeah. God damn, I've got to be doing this everywhere. Everyone's going to know this. I found yeah. the cheat code. I've got it. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So, you know... In so, in so many aspects, it, it just continues itself for me today. Whether it's you know working with Olympians or, or world champion athletes, um, through to um, yeah, starting to visualize and dream up native state and and what such a space would look like. That it would be near the beach. That it would have this beautiful light field studio. That would have greenery in there you would have these machines these high high performance tools um you know it would have this feel that was kind of like um a beautiful yoga studio but with all of the things that i wanted in there to make it performance as well and every day i'd be able to overlook the beach and check the surf um as i'm as i'm doing my thing and then to visualise a space that was quite cave-like and would really draw myself and people inward. And if it was darker, um, it would be able to just let the senses relax a little so everything felt more, more drawn in. And I'd have all of these beautiful performance recovery type tools like an infrared sauna, meditation space, traditional sauna steam room ice bath and vitality pool but it would look really aesthetically beautiful Um, and to have it aesthetically beautiful would be quite attracting and drawing in for people Um, and to have it drawn in would um, yeah invite people 
to want to know more because it was aesthetically pleasing yet it had an undercover intention of recovery it, it merged both realms it wasn't just about looking good and you know shitty quality water and you know tools that were more about just beauty and things like that it was like no this this space is going to change how you feel when you walk out uh so yeah the attractiveness is the magnet to it but to the magnet to wanting people to deepen their experience of themselves so the bathhouse will, might draw you in but hey what's upstairs yeah <laughs> and so we, we move upstairs and they're moving this body in this totally different way and they feel so friggin' good after it that it's like, oh my gosh, what else does this place have to offer? <laughs> and it's like, well, we've got these workshops that help you understand, you know, unlock your personal power or understand posture's influence on your mindset. Do you do group workshops? Yeah, yeah. Oh, That's sick, right. I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> and then into nutrition and, and things like that because we bring in, you know, other people that really understand these sorts of things we've got sound healing workshops and people are just you know evolving themselves but you know native state in terms of its intention has supported part of that journey because you know, they've wanted to bring you in to begin with just via the beauty of the place it's you've nailed the intentions like it's, it's really cool because i was saying this before like off the podcast i was like you're saying like oh like i made it for this and this and this and this reason i'm like it's really interesting seeing it in the real world of being like, that's exactly what it does. Mm. Like uh, the point when like you knew before like I went in there, I'm like, I go in there. I'm like, Oh my God, this place is so beautiful. I feel so good. I feel like I'm in this sort of cave thing and it makes me want to go in. And I'm like, Oh, this is so healing for my mind. And I need that as someone who's like performing really highly all the time. And I'm so curious. I'm like, I know there's a studio gym up there, but what's up there every single time? Like, I want to go check it out. Like I saw my partner, Mike, we should probably like go see like what's up there. Like, mm. so he's really nailed like those intentions for it. I just love how you've brought that to like the real world with like real strong intention setting. Yep. Cause one thing that and I'll talk about this in a minute too, as we on this is that people that I, that I work with is a lot of people, um, just have a, like a lack of clarity. There's like this lack of like this exact, I want to do this. I want it to look like this. I want it to bring it to the real world. Mm. And I don't know how, but because maybe I want to do it at this other point, or maybe I want to do this other thing, or maybe that's not the right thing. I'll get two steps forward, 10 steps back. Mm. I don't want to see it through to the end, mm. but knowing like how clear all your intentions are mm. for exactly what you want has been like a superpower. Well, the, the superpower is being decisive. Yeah, and critically decisive. Yeah. Like that and... Yeah, so what you're describing with people, maybe I want to do this, oh, but I'm so drawn over here. That's, that's a, um, a mental prison and, and it's called a state of ambivalence. So ambivalence is when you've got um, opposing thoughts about the same thing. So it's like do it, don't do it, stay go um sleep in go train um you know watch tv go to bed and, and it's a state of ambivalence is being stuck in these two different things and that creates mental turmoil for people because they're so divided it's like the zipper pulls them apart and they move into two different people so our job is to, you know, through clarity, become really decisive and pull your zipper up so that you merge yourself and that you make the choice towards your dream and your goal every single time you make a choice instead of, you know, being stuck in that, that state, that mental prison. That is so cool. Mm. I want, I want, I'm really interested in, uh, like in this topic in terms of as well as building the business, having your own business, having like your native state as a business as well and then having some of the, I'm not sure if you actually had any entrepreneurial struggles with it because maybe from all the work that you've done or the plant medicines or the intention setting or whatever it is to get to there as well as dealing with the, the modern mindset of that people have around money and abundance as well to mm. create something and have it you know, being like a machine and flowing and everything working yep. so i just love to know how yeah. you just applied everything that you've like learnt into like business entrepreneurship yeah <clears throat> so 
bringing it into um, being an entrepreneur and bringing it into a business sense is one of the, the most grounding things that I've done. And for me, Navy State has been one of the steepest learning curves that I've experienced. And, you know, for me, there's been this, this journey. If I draw back and look at the, the greater journey of my life, I'll see that my triathlon career was held a lot of left brain plan, periodize, execute, wake up at five every day, go to bed 8.30 on the dot, don't go to bed at 8.31. It was like so precise and it was such a step-by-step thing that supported me in having you know, incredible results. Progressively, that merged the right brain where I would go into these visions and um, you know, dream up how I wanted the race to look like I shared with you. Um, so I went from this very logical side through that part of the career but post triathlon, between triathlon career and now, or, or you know, a few years ago, it was very right brain. I I've done quite a few journeys in in plant medicine and five meo and very like visual, very etheric, very out there. Um, and I didn't apply as much of the the left brain for quite quite some time. I mean, how I s- many years you, did you just? Yeah, um, I would say for about six years. Like I'd been on this that sort of deeper journey. It's interesting. There was like eight years professional athlete, mm. then now spiritual. Mm. Know yourself. Let's go explore. Yeah, journey. It's almost like the same, and then. Well, we work in these seven-year cycles. Yeah. <laughs> so it's around, you know, seven and a half years or so triathlon, you know, about six, nearly seven on, on that journey as well. And so I've watched these, yeah, roughly seven-year cycles happen. And, you know, for that time, there was still the left brain required. I, I had my business. So I was coaching one-on-one and, and needed to, you know, implement <laughs> times and see people each hour and things like that. So it's not like I was totally off in space i wasn't at all but um <clears throat> definitely stepped into that realm of exploring shit what else is out there what what is you know this connection to my soul what is this connection to my higher self these experiences that i would have through these journeys and um you know these experiences that were up to me to anchor back here like how am i going to work with that shit here (laughs) that's the most important part often the people's spiritual egos will be like yeah i did these journeys and i went here and there and it's like cool now what 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 are you what are you going to bring to life now and how are you going to anchor it for yourself first and foremost and how does that ripple into um, how you might support others um (coughs) so for me, you know, from, from that in, in the triathlon to th- those sorts of journeys, now into business, it's ha- I have to bring in the emergence of the right brain, the visualisation, the visuals and, um, you know, more of that deeper etheric, you know, understanding gifts and how to express my value and kind of pulling that back down and going, okay, how am I going to create a strategy in a business and how am I going to execute it each day? And you know, for me, with a, a full diary and being coming back to that real deep performance part of, okay, day in, day out, this is what it looks like to run a successful business and to meet our quarterly rocks and roll up to our one year forecast and vision in the business to what's our greater three to five year target into our what what, what we call BHAG, big hairy audacious goal. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Which is a ten ten year a ten year thing. And and to work towards that ten year vision, we've got to come down into what we need to do today. 
what's our to-do list today and, and how well can we execute that and work as a team to do so. And so <clears throat> I'm really re-anchored back into the business and, and but I'm doing it in this way where it's emergence of the left and the right brain. Oh, that's so sick. That's so cool. Doing it in a way where it's, you know, anchoring ancient wisdom with, you know, new technology and today's modern modern day part. So we need to bring them together. And they need to do a big clap mm. and and um, sync with each other to be a higher potential for ourselves. I feel like that's so needed. Like <coughs> for anything to like really take off. Because I, f- I feel personally people are like yearning for that little bit of deeper connection. And like you can feel it when you go to your native state. Like all well, like the little details to everything. It's just like this. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is so cool. Because mm. <laughs> as like a as like an entrepreneur like myself and thinking about those things, like I'm running through thoughts in my head and it's like you run through the term of like, okay, well, do I then, because like I'm sure people listening would be thinking about this, like sort of tossing up the question, do I go focus then if, if I'm confused, do I go focus on um, journeying, more self-exploration, more see where I can go to, to get my right brain like firing before I start executing or do I just need to execute? You need to run both parallel. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you need to, um, you know, self-explore, but at the same time, it's during that self-exploration that you know, you know what you need to do. Your answers are in there. Okay? <laughs> so, so um, yeah, to, to be able to understand self and at the same time run that parallel with putting yourself into leaning into your challenges, leaning into the pressure of things hel- helps you to do it. You don't just do the journey and then come back and now you're equipped to execute. <laughs> <coughs> That's Not cool. That's where my brain goes like, oh, you go like journey and then you execute instead it's no. consistently doing both. Yeah, yeah. Because like for me, business has brought up um, – so many parts, so many shadows mm. as well. Have you got a few that you can like share that you're aware of currently on top of your head? Yeah, you know, like for me, it's been this this journey into le- more leadership, which, um, you know, for so long I've been a mentor, but there's also a difference between being a mentor and being a leader. You know, mentoring is helping helping to support people and going, hey, you know, here's some blocks here. Here's some tools I need you to go and practice these things and, you know, come back and let's see what, what, the, what the process is and how, you, how you've went with that. Whereas more of a leader is also, it, it looks like, hey, you've had these to-dos this, this week and I'm here to help you be accountable to that. Now, why haven't you done it? <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. and and there's there's this greater. I, I, it's a healthy healthy warrior energy to going. Hey, we're on a mission here. Let's go. Don't get left behind. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drag you. So let's pick yourself up and, and let's go. And, and that's more of the leadership energy that's had to be cultivated within me and I've had to work through the parts of me that may just you know want to be liked by <laughs> others um, and maybe hold back on on more of that leadership energy and go to what's known which is more of the mentoring part so you know one one growth part there for me through the development of native state is is being more of a leader and not just a mentor. That's really cool. Did you find yourself when you were like more mentor, not as much leader in terms of a shadow of just like maybe doing too much for other people and like getting caught up and then like losing time and being like, shit, where's the time going in my day? Because I'm, yeah, I'm picking up all this slack instead of like empowering and giving people a bit of a 
like a I would say an encouraging kick up the ass. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. It's a great one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. So, yeah, definitely, definitely something that's yeah I I, I have the per- personal experience of what, you, what you've just shared there. Yeah. Cool. I, I really like that. So, how did you then get out of it? Mm. Well, or, what, it comes or maybe currently still working on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, definitely. Will always be working on it. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, but what what I've noticed is what underpins good leadership is self love. <laughs> so it's like to to um, honor myself helps me to therefore then speak the truth with somebody and where they might not be being accountable. For, for what they're doing or responsible. But to be able to have the courage to call that shit out means that I've got to be in a position where I am in self-love. If that's not there, then you know, we might be very attached to wanting to be acknowledged by other people or appreciated or approved of by others or accepted. And if we're always searching for those, those sorts of things, then we'll never really step into the leadership of calling out, you know, the 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 lack or calling out the fears or, you know, um, getting people to come along. So that sits under good leadership. Well, I like. Did you find that when you were out, like? Uh, when you're really focused, you had that, that six, seven years when you were focusing on yourself and going inwards and doing the plant medicine, the meditation, the visualizations. Did you find that you took things from that and you've had to anchor those things down into leadership as well? And what, and what were they? If yeah, yeah. So in the, you know, I'm experiencing those, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing those parts of me, but then business has been the playing field to really put it into practice because we can see those parts of us but we've got to put it into real life and and really like ground it and put it into practice with others and and with our business and with what we're doing in work so that we can put it to the test too and not just talk about it not just <laughs> not just have it as knowledge just potential there That's yeah just, yeah yeah i know that self-love underpins leadership it's like oh do you well, let's put it to the practice. Yeah. <laughs> so there's just knowledge, which is for knowledge's sake, but then there's wisdom where you really walk the path. And we need we need more wisdom. You know, there's too much knowledge out there. Not that there's too much knowledge, it's, there's just not enough anchoring, practicing of turning that into walking the path and the wisdom. Oh, that's so cool. And well, what thing like what things that I'm interested in that as well, in terms of like the putting things in practice like how did you take away like, like like how did you get the pieces for like your native state yeah. out there when you're like oh my goodness i'm i'm doing this <clears throat> and then how did you go like okay i'm actually gonna i'm gonna bring this and like actually make it come yeah well it's just the necessity of creating a a good business mm-hmm. like it's um to do it well you need um a healthy tribe mm-hmm. you know people to do it well people need to be in the right places of roles and responsibilities mm-hmm. um to do it well you need to, to execute those roles and responsibilities um and always be on top of how we support our our people walking through the door what's their experience and how do we constantly level that up and so you know, it's just it's just through doing it. You know, there's just no better <laughs> experience <laughs> than doing it. Yeah. You know, so that's why I say don't be the procrastinator and do all, all of the right brain stuff and then think if I just do all of that, then I can come into what my purpose is and then I can it's like no, like, you know, really follow follow what you're drawn to and and um, put that in play and, and execute in the now and, and you'll merge the both. 
That's so true. To give you the the deep experience. Yeah, you've also nailed that as well in your native state. You can tell with the team because like every time that I've been to the place, like everyone's been like above and beyond, like mm. actually really creating a really nice experience. And I'm like, wow, this is like so good. So you can see how it like filters down too. So yeah, thanks for setting the standard in that way. No, That's cool. no, thanks. <laughs> yeah. It is really cool. Yeah, there, there's so many so many parts to that that have been supportive of, of me, and it's having incredible business partners that have been amazing at helping me to level up in that sense too. Um, so, yeah, it's about being around the right people to, to help us evolve. And do you think that learning how to be an athlete, like a world-class athlete, and by doing the training, doing the periodization, like learning how to do all those things, do you think that that's benefited you now? And if so, how so? Definitely, definitely, because it's just about when I, when you're training, when you're an athlete, you just need to show up, and you need to, you know, have an intention for each session. What are we here to execute? What are we here to do? Well, this is a hard session, and and these are the times we want to try and nail. All right, let's give it a crack. Let's see if we can stick to that. And then that just comes into what we do each day. You know, what am I? What's my intention today? What am I here to do? Okay, well, I've got these clients. We've got these people walking through the door today at these times. So how do I show up in you know, one of our action items? We show up in our power and peace each day. And so that's like a mantra for us, whether it's the, the girls at the desk, at the front, or th- going through the bathhouse. They're practicing being in their power and their peace each day whether we're about to um, take a class upstairs, how do we show up in our power and our peace? And you know, that's a native state mantra and living philosophy. Oh, that's so cool. I just love how everything's like mm. stemmed down. That's really awesome. And I think like as well from like a, an athlete's perspective, uh, as well as all the tools and the lessons that you've learned in that, like not everyone's had the opportunity mm. to – like be an athlete and work in the ways where it is like working on your own body physically. Mm. And I just think that like, I like personally, I just really encourage any sort of athletic endeavor Mm. for the purpose of learning those skills. Yeah. So that you can show up in a balanced, integrated way. Yeah. That's like immovable. Totally. I think being an athlete or, or practicing music or practicing art, um, having structure around certain things, I think are all incredible tools for, yeah, an upbringing. And if that hasn't been your upbringing, then, you know, bring it into now. Um, whether your calling is towards this form of movement or sport or, or this level of music or, you know, and, and business is that too. Um, but, yeah, practicing those things are, are really, really key. Oh, I love that. So cool. Was there anything else that you wanted to share or mention on the podcast here? Um, Oh, I I think just, yeah, it's about, I think the left and the right brain thing felt really true today. Mm. I think bringing them in, in together. I mean, what, what, what has been your kind of, you know, where does, has your mind gone with the (laughs) the emergence? Yeah. You really got me of just like uh, running them the same time parallel. Because my brain very goes one thing or the other. I have this aversion, it's just me personally, where I'm like, focus on one task, mm. focus on it to the end of the world. Mm. Like, and it's a superpower that I got. Sometimes I can, you know, I can just sit there or do whatever and I'll just like, and nothing doesn't matter until I finish this, whatever this one thing I have. And I think it's like really cool to have like breaking them up and being like, no, do them together because they both go together. Because I always find myself, oh, I'm up here, down here, up here, down here. And it, it, it balances itself out for sure. But I'm like, oh, there's definitely like more wisdom that I could use just in my day. And that is yep. a little bit more intention setting. That yep. is a little bit more of making sure that like, because 2024, I've like planned a lot of my, my year out and I had put in the exploration and these other things. I'm like, cool, honor that this year. You've said you're going to do it. This is the balance that you need. Yep. Really honor like those things. And it's like, cool. Like, I love that because it helps on your journey for like, and I'm speaking to myself right now, it helps on my journey for impact 
helps on my journey for entrepreneurship. It helps on my journey to help people. And I'm like, wow, so there's more reasons yep. for that. So I think that's yep. it's so sick. And then like, you know, bringing what's out, as mentioned, like into reality because you've all got these ideas. Yeah. Being the just decisive to pick yep. which ones and just like bring them to fruition, like yep. really work on them, like notice they're there and work on them. I was like thinking, I was like, when you said visualization, I'm like, oh yeah, there is definitely, because when I was compete when I c- competed in bodybuilding in 2019 and got a pro cut, I visualized that whole thing. Mm. And I'm like, literally, it was like the morning or the day before, I was like almost thinking, like, holy shit, I've won, I've won. Like, yes. I was going nuts. Amazing. And then on stage, that exact thing happened, like when they were calling out the names, I just got ready yep. to to win i was just like oh my goodness that was such a big big event for me it's not it wasn't like an australian title world title or anything but for me it felt so strong mm. because i had so much connection to it mm. so i'm bringing that like bring that to reality then and i'm like oh man that's definitely like so the super fa- super powerful i'm using that on a scale of one to 100 i'm like yeah. probably like 25 at the moment <laughs> like yeah. that definitely needs to be sharpened yeah so yeah. i thought that was Amazing. sick that's yeah. Cool, so for the listeners, I'd like to give all of them a challenge that you could give them to do either like today, this week or something like they've listened to this podcast and they're like, oh, I'm going to take action on something. Yeah. Yeah. What challenge would you like to give them? Oh, a challenge for you guys, hey? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I was mentioning within the podcast that it takes courage to dive into yourself. So I think a, a good challenge is to compassionately inquire into something that you've stored away or you've not wanted to look at within yourself and i say compassionately inquire because it means don't bring judgment to it just bring curiosity bring compassion bring acceptance that it's there and do some writing about it and stay in the compassionate inquiry of it and catch when you go into judgment of it. Oh, I think that's so powerful. And I love that because I do as well think just writing as well is like one of the first steps that you can take from bringing the out here yep. into reality as well. Because when it's on paper, it's like, oh, I'm starting to see it. Yep. Which is sick. Yep. I love it. Where can people find you? Where can they find you on Instagram? Um, where can they find you and all the things? And how can they get to Native State? Yeah, so you can find me personally uh, at Taylor Cecil, T-A-Y-L-O-R-C-E-C-I-L, and then uh, at Your Native State uh, on on social media as well. Um, Native State itself is at Kira Beach, um, yeah, right next to to Coolangatta Airport. Um, So, yeah, you know, if you're around, you know, wherever you're from, People are coming from all over Australia to experience the space. Um, but yeah, come and come and feel the vibration <laughs> held in the space. That's so cool. Well, thanks for coming on to the podcast, Taylor. Thanks, brother.